and now rioting. We look to the Torah for sanity, for advice and guidance. We have in the Torah portion of Nasoi, and as the Alter Rebbe taught us that one should live with the times, meaning the Torah portion of the week. So we have over here in the Torah portion of Nasoi, we just read the famous priestly blessings. There was a mitzvah, a commandment, that the priests of Israel bless every single day the Jewish people in the Holy Temple and from there the entire world. Now this blessing was not exclusive only to the Beit HaMikdash, only in the Holy Temple, but anywhere in the world, inside of Israel, outside of Israel, at a time of freedom and at a time of exile, this bracha, this mitzvah, and this blessing continues that every day the Kohanim, the priests, have the obligation to bless the people of Israel. And in truth, this is a blessing that a father blesses his children, a mother blesses her children, and every person can use this blessing to bless their friend and bless their neighbor. What is unique about this bracha? If we look into this morning's reading in the portion of Nasoi, chapter number six, we read the priestly blessing which goes, Yivarecha Hashem Yishvarecha, which means may God bless you and watch over you and protect you. And then we say, Yar Hashem Panavelecha Vichunecha, which means may God shine his face to you and endow you with grace. And the third blessing is, Yisra Hashem, Pana Belecha, V'yaseim Lecha Shalom, which means, may God be partial toward you and grant you shalom and grant you peace and harmony. I would like to look into the, the Rashi. Rashi is the classic commentator on the Torah, the logician of the Torah, the French commentary on the Chumash. And let me tell you what he says here, that the Lord should bless you, which means that your possessions shall be blessed. In other words, Rashi says that the blessing seemingly is a very limited blessing. He says that your possessions, your property, that already you own should be blessed. And the question comes to mind, why is Rashi limiting this blessing? Why doesn't he say that God should bless you in everything that you do, in the city, in the field, your apple orchard, your vineyard, your stores, your children, your cattle, like the Torah tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, all the blessings. Why? make a particular blessing, that your possessions, that already you have, should be blessed. And the Rebbe gives the answer as follows, that we are dealing here with a unique blessing. It is a blessing that the Kohanim, that the priests are giving to the people of Israel. It's not a blessing that is mentioned in Deuteronomy, and it's not a blessing that was already mentioned at the end of Leviticus. It's a unique blessing. It's a new blessing. It's not repeating itself. It's not referring to another blessing. In other words, the blessing of the Kohen is unique because it applies to every individual, regardless if you deserve it or not. Merely by the fact that we are created in the image of God, merely that we are God's children already, we are deservant and we are recipients of this blessing. What is this blessing? It's not a blessing of quantity. It's a blessing of quality. In other words, that the fields and the possessions and our stores and our homes that we already have, that we already bought, that we have in our possession, this should now be blessed in an overabundance. What does it mean in overabundance? There's a famous story in the Torah of Yitzchak our father Isaac, that he was in Gaza 
and he bought a piece of land over there and he worked the land. Says the Torah, piece of land passable. And yet, says the Torah, he was blessed a hundred times more than everybody else. In other words, think about it. Instead of only acquiring 1,000 pounds of flour or apples from his orchard, Yitzchak Avinu, Isaac, our father, was able to accomplish and acquire that year 100 times more. He had 100,000 pounds. This was the blessing. And similarly, this is the blessing here in this week's Torah portion that we live by this week. And really, a blessing that we say every single day and a blessing that we should say every day to our children and to our friends and to our spouses, which is the priestly blessing. But not again, only for priests to say. It was given to them as an obligation to say, but yet we have the right to use it every day. And the first blessing is that our possessions should be blessed many, many, many times over and over again. Not only quantity, but again, more important quality, that the possessions that we already have should be blessed. So this is the first blessing. And today, in this year, 2020, we appreciate this blessing more than ever before at a time that many stores are closed, many businesses are closed, many offices are closed, people are out of jobs, people are quarantined. We understand that God has the ability that even under these circumstances, that our possessions that already we have should be blessed a hundredfold and more. And this is the first blessing that we speak about in this week's Torah portion. We then move on to the next verse, the second verse of the blessing of the priests. Yod Hashem May God shine his face. But before that even, to step back for a moment, in verse 24 we said, God should bless you and watch over you. What does that mean? Listen to this. This is an amazing Rashi over here. Rashi says, what does it mean he should watch you and protect over you? That no thieves or armed thieves shall attack you and steal your money. Because even someone who gives you a gift and he gave you a beautiful gift, he doesn't have the power to protect that gift after he gave it to you. And therefore, if I give you a gift and tomorrow a thief steals that gift from you, you have no benefit from that gift. Says Rashi, but Almighty God, who ha no yisein, who ha shemer. He not only gives you blessing, he not only gives you health, he not only gives you money, he not only gives you success, but he watches it, he protects it after that. And there are many explanations in the Sifri. So what is the meaning of Yishmerecha, that God should watch over you? Says Rashi, an amazing thing. And again, today, when we have riots in America, we appreciate this verse even more, even though the Torah was given over 3,332 years ago. What is God telling us here? That not only will I give you blessing, but I'm going to watch it and protect you. And even though a normal individual, a human being who gives you a gift cannot protect you, when there are no police in the streets, when there are no gods in the streets, when no one can protect you from these hoodlums and these people who are rioting, and looting and destroying your possessions. That is true maybe when we talk about people who are bus of a dumb. <clears throat> that is true when we are talking about human beings. But a mighty God who blesses you, he can protect you from everybody. <clears throat> and this is the blessing in this week's Torah portion that we so much need and we truly desire that the blessing should come from Almighty God himself. We now continue verse 25. That may God shine his face to you and endow you with grace, says Rashi here. What does that mean? That God shows you a smiley face. Not only is he giving you what you need, but he does this with kindness and with happiness and with joy and he's laughing and he's joyful. Upon him, Suhuva is with a golden face. 
He is so happy to give you the gifts. Sometimes you ask your mother for a dollar or twenty dollars or, or, or a watch. <clears throat> she says, okay, here, take the money and go. I don't want to give it to you. You don't deserve it. How do you feel? You take the money and you spend it, but you're not so happy. Here says the Torah that God not only gives you the blessings, but he gives you the blessings with a smile, with a laughter, with joy, and with happiness. And finally, he concludes, he will give you the blessing of shalom, the blessing of peace. And this is what we need today more than ever before, my dear friends, that the world should be at peace. I believe all of us understand that we are living in very difficult times, that the world is trembling. The life of, of George Floyd was lost. It's a terrible, terrible disgrace to humanity. It's a loss to every human being. Our hearts go out to the family of George Floyd and we pay them our condolences, our sympathy. We have to realize that every human being is created in the image of God. And therefore, we have the obligation to uphold humanity and the dignity of life. It doesn't matter what religion or what color or what creed you are. As the Rebbe once said that we are colorblind. A Jew is colorblind. What does that mean? That the soul, the soul has no color. And therefore we have to be colorblind. It doesn't matter who the person is or what color the person is. We have to love them and respect them and care about each individual. At the same time, we have to also cry out against the terrible injustice that is taking place today throughout America. We have to cry out against all of this terrible looting and destruction of property that is taking place. Yes, you have a right to make peaceful demonstrations, and that is the beauty of America, that we have freedom of speech. We have a right to make rallies and to ask and request of our government to give us what we need. At the same time, we have an obligation to ourselves and to Almighty God to be human. And human takes place first. There's a very interesting Cheskuni, one of the early commentaries on the Bible. The Cheskuni asks the following question. Why did God bring a mabel? Why did God bring the terrible flood upon all humanity? And the Cheskuni challenges the Bible and challenges God and says, if you have law, if you establish a constitution, if you establish rules and regulations, yes, if a person violates those rules, if a person violates those regulations, you have a right to punish the person. But the world, before the giving of the Torah, in the year 2448, on the Jewish calendar, did not have a Torah yet. It did not have the Ten Commandments yet. It was not given the seven Noahide laws. Even the servant Noahide laws was given to Noah and Noah after the flood. If that is the case, says the Cheskuni, how is it that the world was punished with a flood for 40 days and 40 nights that wiped out the entire humanity? And the Cheskuni says that even though it's true that there was not an official declaration of Torah law or the seven Noahide laws, However, there is something which is called logic. There is something which is called humanity. And that is a person needs to use their brains and needs to use their intellect to understand that you're not allowed to kill another person. You have to use your brains and understand that it's morally incorrect to steal someone else's property. And Rashi tells us that the actual mabu, the flood, was brought upon the world because of theft, because they stole things that did not belong to them. So we realize and understand today that we need to educate the world. We cannot expect them to use only their logic and only their, their intellect, because even though that should be enough, 
unfortunately, it is not enough. So at this time in history, we need to take the obligation and the initiative that we as people, we as human beings, we who are created in the image of God, we that understand the sanctity of life, that we that understand the importance of personal property, we need to inspire our neighbors and our children and our friends. And I say this with, with tremendous humility and respect for others, that we have today a social platform. We have the ability to inspire thousands of people by writing one or two nice words. We have to use the social media, the Twitter, the Facebook, the YouTube, not to talk about personal relationship between man and man and between man and God. And therefore, we need to talk about the seven Noahide laws. We need to talk about morals. And if you want to put something on Twitter, if you want to put something on Facebook, if you want to put something on YouTube, think twice, think three times. Don't mention politics. Bring down a verse from the Bible. Bring down a verse from Psalms. Bring down a verse from the Talmud. Say something that's inspiring. Say something that is meaningful. Not everything that we think must we animosity and divisiveness amongst people. There is no reason to say it, even though it may be true, because we have enough divisiveness already in the world. Comes along the parsha of Nasoi. It says Nasoi Esroish. The opening words of this week's Torah portion is to lift up your head. We have to raise our dignity. We have to raise our pride. We have to realize we have a head. We have intellect. We have logic. But even that is not enough. Nasoi esroish means raise up your head, raise up your intellect to an even greater level, a higher level. And that is use your mind for spirituality. Use your mind for godliness. Use your mind for healing, not for destruction. I would like to conclude with a story. This is a story of a very, very, very wealthy man. His name was David T. Chase. <clears throat> David T. Chase was a survivor of the Holocaust. And he worked very hard on himself. As they say in America, he was a self-made man, even though nobody is self-made because we have parents, we have teachers, we have, we have almighty God, who gives us the blessing. And so David T. Chase was a God-fearing person, but he was not yet religious. And he began to give money to different institutions. And one day he met Rabbi Hersin from the Rabbinical College of America. And Rabbi Hersin introduced him to Lubavitch and to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe sent him a pair of tefillin and asked him to begin to put on the tefillin and to pray every day. David T. Chase acquiesced to the Rebbe's request and began to pray. Being a very wealthy man, he owned his own yacht, and he would travel very often. And so one day, he goes to the captain of the yacht, and he asks the captain, Captain, sir, tell me, what direction is Mizrach? What direction is east? And the captain said, well, east is over there. Fine. He made nothing of it. The next day again, David T. Chase goes over to the captain and says, Captain, where is east? Again, he points to the direction of east. And this goes on day after day. After a number of days, the captain turns to the individual, to David T. Chase, and he says, Mr. Chase, do you want to take over my job? Do you want to become the captain of the yacht? Do you want to fire me? Why do you need to know the direction of east? I am your captain. I will take you to your destination. And David Chase, in his very sweet manner, said to the captain, no, not at all. I, I really appreciate what you're doing. But the reason why I need to know the direction of east is because I put on to fill in every day. I pray to Almighty God. And the Jewish custom is that we turn to the east which is towards Jerusalem when we pray. And so I need to know 
the direction of east. The captain said to himself, wow, that's amazing. This wealthy man who doesn't need anybody's favors and has everything in life, money, health, good looks, a yacht, and yet he asks me the direction of east. Why? Because he has to pray to God. He needs to pray to a supreme being, the creator of the universe. He says, wow, I'm a simple captain. I'm not Jewish, but I too should begin to pray to Almighty God. And so he himself, the captain, every day began to follow in the footsteps of his boss. And he too began to pray to Almighty God. You don't have to be Jewish. You don't have to be religious. And you don't have to be from any nationality, color, or creed. Every single one of us was endowed with a gift. And that is we were given a soul. We were given a piece of God. We need to maintain and protect that spirituality. We need to maintain that morality. We need to maintain and to protect that humanity. And so we are told in this week's Torah portion that God is going to bless us. And he's going to bless us not only quantitatively, but qualitatively. And not only that, after he gives us all of these blessings, even though it's a time of pandemic, even though it's a time of riot, he will also protect us from the rioters. He will protect us from the thieves. He will protect us from these hoodlums. He will protect us from all diseases and maladies. All we have to do is our part, part of the human race, which logic dictates, is to thank our Father in heaven, to thank our boss, to thank our creator for all the kindness that he bestows upon us and to pray every day that God bring healing and shalom, that he brings peace to the world. And we hope and pray that each one of us will use our God-given potential to use our capacity and our strength to write and to speak and to inspire ourselves to be better human beings and to teach these seven Noahide laws, these beautiful laws to the world around us. And because, as we said very early today in the program, that we thank God for giving back our soul, and we concluded with the words, great is your faith in 